Hello, and welcome to our preview of KubeCon Cloud NativeCon North America 2024. Here on theCUBE, I'm Rob Stretche, Managing Director of the Cube Research. To help me unpack this, really I'm excited to have Simon Seagrave, Senior Principal Product Marketing Manager for Red Hat Hybrid Platforms to join me here today, because I think, again, you guys are a big sponsor of KubeCon, uh, obviously, OpenShift is a big cloud native Kubernetes platform, and you guys get to see it and you're bringing a lot of, uh, I guess you could say energy to the agenda that's going on. So I wanna welcome you on board here first off. Thanks for coming on board and helping me unpack this. Hey Rob, thank you very much and it's great to be here. Yeah, I, I think let's dive into the first thing, uh, the agenda that's going on. There's a lot of stuff, and for those who don't know, there's a lot going on on day zero, which is Tuesday this year because of Veterans Day. Uh, and then we'll extend the, it goes out through Friday and there's keynotes on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, but what are you seeing as kind of the big themes this year in the agenda and what's going on? Yeah, very much so, Rob. Um, super excited to be attending this year. And again, what a year to go. I mean, Kubernetes celebrated its 10th birthday this year. Um, very excited to be there to help celebrate that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I see KubeCon as more than just a conference, right? It's a, it's a glimpse into the future, right? It's the coming together of passionate technologists, you know, coming together, bringing thoughts, ideas, and, and you know, ha having that, uh, the opportunity to share those amongst their peers from which, you know, other ideas are spawned and taken forward. Um, as you mentioned there, Tuesday, day zero events. I mean, I, I think there's there's upwards of, what, 16 to 18 this year. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's an awful lot. Um, uh, at Red Hat, uh, we are sponsors of a number of them. Uh, for example, I would like to give a shameless plug to uh, uh, Red Hat's OpenShift Commons. Uh, that is a free-to-attend event on the, the Day Zero calendar there. Which, well, which by the way, i, I got to say, I, I've gone to multiple of them. Uh, it's fantastic. And I think for those people who haven't been, uh, it's free to attend, like you said, and it's right next door this year, which is good. So very local. But the amount of customers you bring to the table at Commons is awesome. Uh, very much so, Rob. Yeah, yeah. And and this year is no exception as well. We've got a fantastic lineup of customers uh, coming to speak from everything around from, uh, you know, a lot of the hot topics that, that we'll cover around sort of AI right through to virtualization, um, uh, you know, uh, DevOps, you know, DevOps, massive um, uh, topic at the moment for, for, for our conversations with our customers and everything. Um, uh, and hey, let's not forget security. Security, you know, of utmost importance and, you know, is woven throughout everything that we do. So like I mentioned, you know, we've got some great customers coming in. Um, we've got some fantastic sessions. We've brought along some of our best people from Red Hat to uh, come and uh, uh, speak to the attendees. And like I say, it's uh, free to attend. So And beyond Commons, you're, you're like you said, you're sponsoring some of the other ones that are going on. What are some of those that are? Yeah, definitely, Rob. Uh, some of the others we're, we're, we're sponsoring, we've got uh, ArgoCon, again, around uh, GitOps. Um, was super proud uh, to continue our sponsorship of that. Um, as well as that, uh, Backstage. Backstage as well. We are seeing a massive increase in interest around Backstage, and that's something that uh, a lot of our customers are starting to integrate into their uh, DevOps uh, workflow with their, their developers. Um, you know, By the way, Backstage, one of my favorite, favorite Backstage day, I've gone multiple times yeah. now. And it's one of the things, that those people who don't know, it came originally out of Spotify and how they yes. built out their developer portals and things like that. So people who are really interested in understanding how to build a developer portal yeah. And I know you guys are supporters of it, not just from a financial perspective, but you actually contribute code as well as a number of other companies do uh, across the thing. But one of my favorite ones, so I'm glad you brought that well, one. Well, I, I personally, I actually, not many people know this, I actually started as a developer back in, I think it was 1994, 95 originally, uh, before I switched across the infrastructure. I would have loved something like Backst yeah. Backstage back then. It would have really helped the onboarding and collaboration with my fellow developers. Yeah, and I know you guys contribute to a lot of the other programs and projects that are out there. I, I think, again, like you said, AI, uh, DevOps, and security are going to be some of that. I, I know they're, they're also going to talk about, from the main stage, a little bit uh, kind of the, the patent troll and, and licensing stuff. But we'll, we'll stay away from that because <laughs> neither of us are lawyers. So but, uh, Exactly. But I, I think, you know, it, you guys 
you know, see a lot of the security stuff as well and your contributors in that side as well, which is great. So I, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Very much so. I mean, one of the big themes that we, I hate none of us can miss for this year is, is around AI. That is a particular topic that I'm, I'm very passionate about as a technologist, and I'm looking forward to attending that day zero event, but but also the other AI, AI sessions throughout the week as well. Um, we at Red Hat, obviously, we're doing a lot around uh, AI at the moment with RHEL AI, OpenShift AI, and uh, the introduction of Lightspeed, for example, into uh, the OpenShift uh, console as a virtual assistant. Right. It was there in Ansible. Now it's coming to OpenShift. I mean, it, it's. I think that's great. And to your point, the Kubernetes and Cloud Native uh, AI Day, I think that's what it's called. It is. is uh, <laughs> what a mouthful. I, I, it's going to be <laughs> packed. I mean, all of these are going to be packed. It's uh, So... Again, to those who are out there watching, if you haven't gone in and planned out, you should go and see. I already looked. Some of these are actually full, uh, you know, from a, you know, they put them in certain size rooms and stuff like that. Get on the waiting list and uh, go to it because I think that to me is one of the, one of the keys is exactly what you were talking about is learning from others. And I, I think you'll yes. get to see other practitioners. One of the ones I love that's going to be there is uh, data on Kubernetes or doc. DOK. Yes. Uh, that one to me, to your point about AI, is going to be key because you're talking about database, not just storage, but they're talking about data and how do you integrate data in. And if you're doing AI on Kubernetes, funny enough, you need data. So, I, and it, you guys play pretty well in that space. As well. Super important. I've actually put my name on the list for a couple of sessions, one around TensorFlow already, uh, KServe, obviously super interesting, and obviously Kubeflow as well. So, yeah, some really good sessions there to attend. Yeah, I think that, again, it's it's such a great com community. There's the hallway track where people are going to be talking to each other and interacting. Highly suggest that. Uh, I learned probably more from doing that. I also, you know, one of my strategies is at the lunch, I go and sit with somebody I don't know and go and sit at a table with people I don't know so that you get to learn. But I think it's there's a lot of interest, I think, in North America here, not only because it's uh, Kubernetes' 10th year, but I, I would say, you know, it's a, a lot of applications that have been, you know, formally virtualized are looking at how do they transition or modernize in a lot of cases and are being brought to Kubernetes. And I, I think, you know, both of us being older infrastructure people and <laughs> yeah, having indeed. played in the virtualization space, I, I have to imagine that the theme of, you know, what was Kubert and what you guys are doing with OpenShift virtualization, that has to be a big theme that you see as well this year. Uh, very much so. I mean, a, a, a large a large amount of our conversation, shall we say at the moment, with with existing and new customers, very much geared around, you know, the, that virtualization story. There's been a lot of disruption within the industry. Uh, and so customers are, are currently in the market looking at, uh, at a potential alternatives. Uh, OpenShift virtualization, which is based on the upstream Kubevert pro uh, uh, product, uh, being one of them. But obviously, at the beating heart of that solution, we have KVM. You know, KVM has been around since what 2007, 2008. Um, highly secure, used by you know some of the largest you know um, uh, companies within the within the uh, within the world. Um, so yeah, we we we've got a great story to tell there. Very good, robust story there. Yeah, and I know we'll have a number of people on from Red Hat and from other companies to really bring a lot of color to uh, not just that BERT stuff, but to a number of different things. And especially, uh, I love uh, talking to security people about S-bombs and things like that, <laughs> I which I'm sure we'll be diving into because I think a big piece of the security aspect of this is it's it's there's two kind of aspects. There's the infrastructure security, and then there's the dev actual code security and how AI is actually playing in both sides of that as well, which is going to be very interesting. Uh, very much so, Rob. I mean, I think it's, it's super exciting. I mean, what we're going to see over time, there's a couple of key areas where we're seeing AI have direct application as of today. But, you know, as AI matures, it's definitely going to find its way into, uh, you know, other other less uh, thought of areas at, at this point. I mean, security being, being massive to this, particularly with the shift left focus around security these days as well. Yeah, and I, I think AI, uh, to me personally, I, I look at AI and open source as being, uh, you know, peanut butter and jelly going together very well because I think from a big perspective, uh, you know, people want to use open source models. They want to use all of this. I mean, I know IBM has gone and worked with Red Hat on open sourcing their Granite models that yeah. were part of Watson X. And I, I would see that, you know, there's got to be a big play for the entire 
ecosystem in AI at this conference. I, I think, like you were saying, you're signed up for some of the sessions already. Yeah, you know, what a strong pairing though, Rob, right? You know, we've got, uh, you know, open source community, fantastic, you know, a, a set of folks out there, technologists, super passionate about, you know, uh, technologies such as AI. And then we have cloud native. What a brilliant pairing, bring those two together. What excites me is obviously that sense of, uh, you know, the open source premise, you know, around, um, uh, you know, the openness. But it's, I, I see this as a real sort of level setter for perhaps, you know, slightly smaller companies out there, you know, bringing AI to the open source uh, space uh, you know, allows these smaller mid-sized companies that don't have huge budgets to start to get involved and take part and, uh, you know, and, and benefit from what AI can bring to their business. Yeah, I, I think one of the things, and you, you just kind of hit on it, that triggered in my mind was what, the simplicity of Kubernetes and making it simpler. And I think that you talked about Argo and a lot, people get their head wrapped around some of the terms and there's a lot of terms, trust me. I yeah. used to, it took me a while to get my head wrapped around them. But one of the things I think will be another big theme is that, you know, pl for people who do platform engineering is the infrastructure is code and how do you really automate a lot of that as well, uh, which plays well with Ansible, which is an open source project as well as yes. using a product uh, from Red Hat. And there's a number of, op you know, infrastructure as code companies that will be there exhibiting uh, what they're doing in the in there. But it's also people like Intel, AMD, NVIDIA actually coming to the table to help on the AI side with some open source to make it easier to do AI in Kubernetes. And I would see that that's got to be helpful to what you guys do as well and how you kind of partner up with this ecosystem. Very much so, Rob. I mean, as, as a company at Red Hat, I mean, we, we, we partner very closely and we've got fantastic relationships with, with actually all those, uh, those organizations, all those companies that you mentioned there. Um, again, it's what I like about open source. It brings not only the individuals to the table, but also, you know, I love that sense of uh, a sharing or camaraderie from the larger organizations out there, you know, sharing their code. I mean, uh, earlier on, you, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, Backstage with Spotify. So, you know, rather than keep this as a closed product, uh, you know, within the walls of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Spotify, you know, they decided to share it, you know, as with you know, it's the same premise that we we do with Red Hat here. You know, we feed back to those upstream communities. So I, I think it's fantastic. It's the coming together of those, you know, those those passionate technologists in the open source community, but also the, you know, the, the, the sharing that these large large companies have decided to, um, you know, take part in and share their code. Yeah, and I, I think it'll be interesting to see the progress that we've made since uh, Paris. I, I think there'll yeah. be some checkpoints and some uh, graduations. Uh, they always do the on stage graduations, which is always interesting because, you know, seeing ones that have graduated, I, I think there'll be a, there'll be big talk about, uh, how organizations, I mean, Red Hat is well advanced on how you can be an ongoing concern as a company and monetizing while contributing back. There's going to be a lot of discussion about that because there was some, uh, kerfuffle around somebody's licensing going into this. I won't call them out by name, but I think there's some very different licensing models that are being exhibited. And I think, again, AI security and, you know, the, the whole how you make DevOps platform engineering easier is definitely going to be some of the major themes we see there. Coming out of Paris, I think a lot of people were just trying to figure out uh, how AI and, you know, I, I think it was OpenAI was on stage yeah. and some of the others talking about how they use Kubernetes to actually go and train it and how they spun up the clusters and the GPUs and all of that. It would seem like that, you know, obviously AI is having its moment. There's, there's no doubt about that. But Kubernetes as a supporting actor and uh, infrastructure to AI seems to be, and it, it must be stuff you're seeing even in between these KubeCon, Cloud Native Cons, you must see a lot of interest in that. Yeah, very much so, Rob. I mean, not just AI as well. Uh, you know, a lot of customers out there, they're either starting or they're partway through their application modernization journey. And uh, obviously, you know, what plays better into that than Kubernetes and containers? Um, so, you know, what we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, with our conversations with, with customers, um, you know, they're either considering or they're taking their first steps into integrating AI capabilities into their modernized cloud native um, uh, container based applications as well. So, yeah, again, brilliant pairing, you know, Kubernetes at the heart of not only application modernization, but providing that, that infrastructure, that, that platform on which customers can then integrate and take advantage of AI 
uh, into their into their run into their projects applications and uh, infrastructure so so last question to you uh and i'll ask it to myself as well but from what are you most excited about going into uh you know a couple weeks from now in salt lake yeah, very much so i mean i i feel very privileged i was asked to mc the openshift commons uh event the, the day zero event so i'm very much looking forward to that um connecting with my peers um originally uh i am a technologist i like I mentioned, I was an application developer, worked in infrastructure. I was also a technical architect for many years as well. So um, for me, it's it's being there, getting to share with the community, but equally connecting with my peers in the industry out there, hearing, you know, hearing their stories, um, picking up, uh, you know, ideas that, you know, that I can then bring back to Red Hat, you know, to, to the engineering teams, to my peers within the company to share as well. Um, I always enjoy being at the booth and, uh, you know, we have a booth presence there. We've got some fantastic people turning up um, to to do sessions throughout the week. We have the pavilion uh, there where we have um, a number of our uh, technical folks who will be in attendance um, yeah. to both learn, but also to share ideas as well. Um, but for me, it's, it's I, I you know, I, I love it as an event. It is it is about that openness and it's about community and sharing, whether you're an individual contributor or whether you're a larger organization. So uh, for me, it's the energy of the event that I, I really enjoy. Yeah, I, I, I think that you hit the nail on the head with the community aspect of it. I, I think to me, that's always like top of the list, the hallway track, going to the sessions and hearing from the people who are either the, the prime or running the different projects and the devs who are actually contributing back. I'm also excited because I, I think there's going to be a lot of, there's always usually about 50% new people to KubeCon yes. at this I think uh, Paris was 16,000, so you had 8,000 people there that were new to it. I expect this to be uh, a little bit larger, uh, maybe around the same size, but I, I think actually there may be even more people who are new to Kubernetes being there because of the changing landscape with virtualization and infrastructure and how people are managing it and looking for solutions there. Uh, so I'm really excited about the energy that'll be brought to this and also, uh, you know, seeing where projects and what projects are graduating or moving yeah. through from sandbox up through graduation. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. So there's going to be a lot of great content this week. And, and just for anyone attending for the first time, you know, I highly recommend make the most of the opportunity. Um, definitely don't be backwards and coming forwards when reaching out to, to your peers. Um, uh, I, I will be there. If you see me, feel free. You know, I'd love to connect with you. Um, and I always like meeting new people and, uh, getting to find out more as to what you're working on, your thoughts, your ideas around the technologies. Yeah, and same here. I, I think that's always, you know, it's always a community there and, and you'll be able to find me pretty easily. I'll be lit up like a Christmas <laughs> tree over in the corner and on the, on the cube set there. But happy to have conversations. Like I said, you know, grab some new people and, and have that. So uh, Simon, thanks for coming on board and helping me unpack this a little bit. Fantastic, Rob. Much appreciated. And I'll be checking you out after our keynote on Thursday, uh, where we will be having a cube session with you then. So I really look forward to it. Oh, yeah. It'll be a lot of fun. I, I, we have already four, if not more, with you guys. And we'll be uh, really exploring this really deeply. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I can't wait. Look forward to it, Rob. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching this preview on The Cube, the leader in high-tech analysis and news. Stay tuned. We're going to be live in Salt Lake at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2024, North America. All of those names going together. To me, it's going to be exciting. There's a lot coming. Stay tuned to the Cube, and we'll bring it to you if you're not there. If you are there, stop by and see us.